Shoulder dystocia occurs when, following the delivery of the fetal head, the baby's anterior shoulder gets stuck behind the mother's symphysis pubis and there is a need for additional obstetric manoeuvres to effectively birth the infant's shoulders. The incidence of shoulder dystocia varies around 1%, with an increased risk of its presentation in people with macrosomia, GDM, a previous shoulder dystocia with a recurrence rate of around 10%, maternal obesity, post-dates, prolonged first and second stage, augmentation or induction of labour, instrumental birth or precipitate labour. There are a number of potential complications associated with shoulder dystocia for both the mother and the baby, such as third and fourth degree perineal tears, PPH, uterine rupture, psychological effects of birth trauma, fetal brachial plexus injury, fracture of the fetal clavicle and fetal hypoxia. The handover for this clinical scenario is that Greta is a 32-year-old G2P1 at 30 week, 38 weeks gestation. She's a positive blood group GBS negative. She's in a same-sex relationship with a donor pregnancy and is being induced for gestational diabetes mellitus requiring insulin. Her first birth was a normal vaginal delivery. This morning her membranes were artificially ruptured and cytosodon was commenced. Three hours ago Greta had an epidural inserted. An hour ago, she was assessed as being fully dilated at spines as being, and has been pushing effectively since. Her second stage, however, is taking a while. This scenario commences as the presenting part is on view and the second midwife enters the room to receive the baby. All right, Greta, are you feeling that contraction there? Can you give me some big pushes? That's it, good job. Taylor, can I get you to press the call buzzer? Just need a bit of help when the baby arrives. That's it, Shanae. Good job. Good job. So this is Greta and her partner Taylor. Yeah. Um, so this is Greta's second baby. Um, she's being induced for GBM on insulin. She's got a positive blood group, negative GBS. Um, and she's been pushing for a little while, but we're seeing good progress. And she's got an epidural in situ. Beautiful, all right, Greta. I'm just gonna be standing over here waiting for your baby. You're doing so well. Feeling that next one coming on? That's it, all right. So big pushes and then just breathing when I tell you to, okay? That's it, good job, well done, well done. Okay, just little pushes. Oh. That's it, oh. good job. And just breathing now, oh. just breathing. Oh. Nice and slow. Oh. Good job, well done, oh. really good. Oh. Alrighty, head born. Beautiful, really, really good work, right oh. That's it, we'll just wait for the oh. next contraction. Oh. Alright, so I'm seeing a bit of turtling here, Sinead. Um, not any restitution yet, so would you be able to press the emergency buzzer? Alright, but I still want you to push with these contractions, alright? Alright, Greta, I've just pressed the emergency buzzer, so we're going to have a few people come in and help us deliver this baby, okay? Hi, Greta, I'm Greta, I'm in charge of her earlier. Yeah. Sinead wants me to be the problem. I'm just having turtling and like restitution, head on, uh, head oh. on, head 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 on, head
shoulder move over to the side so she can be born. You're doing so well. Very important you don't push it this time, Greta. Just keep breathing through. It's in. Really good job. Ooh, that one now. Okay, that's alright. Just breathing through. That's been 30 seconds. Is there any progress, Frankie? No, not seeing any progress with that. So just going to um, try it with a screw. Yep. Just popping another few fingers in, okay, Greta? You're doing so well. Make sure you keep breathing through. No pushing. Sinead, you just grab the suction catheter if Frankie needs it for the posterior arm. That's been 30 seconds, Frankie. Yep. Yeah, so I've located the posterior arm. Um, so I'm just going to try and deliver that to release the posterior shoulder. And you've got right. suction catheter right. here if you need it. Posterior arm has been delivered, so anterior shoulder has been released. Ooh. That's it. Can you give me a big push with this one? Ooh. That's it. Your baby's almost here, doing so well. Really good job. Oh, beautiful. Good job. Congratulations. Great, I'm just going to give you a sharp sting in your leg, just an injection to help the placenta. 11.37 centimetric. Here then. Yep. Do you um, want to pull yeah. that? Yep. Yeah. 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 Y
The emergency of shoulder dystocia was declared early on in our scenario to enable appropriate action, management and referral. A code pink was acknowledged which allowed for appropriate referral and consultation. In the emergency scenario, there were clear roles undertaken by all team members. Bella clearly identified herself as the leader and didn't partake in clinical seals in the scenario to avoid fixation error and maintain a helicopter view of the clinical scenario. As the leader, she was aware of what Shanae and Frankie were doing to fulfil their roles and maintain closed loop communication to clearly allocate tasks. Frankie and I acknowledged our allocated tasks to also maintain closed loop communication with Bella. Frankie and I maintained communication with Greta to update her on the situation and inform her on what would be happening next to achieve patient-centred care. Bella also ensured team members were asked for input, specifically Frankie in her role as the Akusha. Regular verbal updates were given by myself as the Akusha in relation to progress of delivery, which allowed for correct ongoing planning of care. Additionally, Bella gave regular updates of the time taken for each manoeuvre to prevent fixation errors and ensure team members maintained situational awareness. Overall, we employed the key principles of CRM in our clinical management of a shoulder dystocia. This ensured the safe and timely delivery of the infant in this scenario. These principles may also be employed in other obstetric emergencies to improve clinical outcomes.